Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. We're here in Tiled working on Elm Lore. Uh, this is a little small tutorial series. Uh, you can check the link in the description to our wiki and for more information on mapping and also the previous episodes and future episodes. Uh, so we left off last time learning about terrains. I keep saying auto tiles but basically terrain which is a nice tra terrain brush here which is the ability to paint and auto do the edges for you. Normally, when you uh, use a tile set and you you know you pick, you know place something, it's basically like this, and then you gotta oh do the edges. Now you can be a little smarter and grab them here, and grab it here and bring them down, and there you go. You know you can do it by hand and you can do it decently fast if you get a lot of practice, and you will need to do things manually um, in other layers as well. Um, but, uh, you know, just your base ground, uh, just doing the actual terrain itself. It's nice to be able to paint it like a canvas and not have to spend day and night messing around with it. So today we're going to be talking about layers, and they're very important. I mean, your layers are everything, and keeping them organized is as well as important. As well as remembering which layer you're working on when you're working on it. Because you don't want to screw up and be like, oh shit, I did everything in the wrong layer when it was supposed to be the other layer. There are methods to bringing it to the other layer. Um, for example, if we uncheck all these, you can see um, I have three layers going on here and they're actually all being used. The first one was the, you know, the base layer here. Let me uncheck this one. Was everything here. The auto tiles really made an awesome job out of this. The second layer is adding the farm field and the third layer was adding the wheat. Well, let's just say for some reason, and even though we don't want this, we wanted to take the wheat, and we'll do it, uh, and take it out of there. Um, but we don't want to have to redraw it, and we, we spend a lot of time. Let's just say this is an entire house or something. Well, we can go and use this tool up here, basically the rectangle select, which is R, and hit Control X, and then we can bring it to layer two, and hit Control V, and it'll actually show up as a stamp. So you can actually place multiples of it. So we hit Control Z and let's place it right here. Well, we knew that was going to break that anyways, um, but yeah, this gives you the ability to also manipulate things multiple times. I mean, if you built an entire house, you want to be able to manipulate it. Or let's just say you're not using auto tiling set, but uh, working on oh, like these stairs look kind of cool. Let's check them out. I've never used these myself, but uh, oh, there you go. Uh, let's there you go. There you go, and then, aha, look at that, and then we can go like this, and we can keep going and going and going, and that's sort of like using, you know, the, the ability to complete things and drag it, and uh, these are kind of rough looking, I'm not sure what's supposed to be, <laughs> you can see I'm kind of, you know, derping up here trying to understand which ones are probably the best for this, but uh, you could probably even do these, you know, oh, no. Those aren't the best. Either way, you'll have to play around and figure out which tiles work the best and which ones look right and things like that. But, uh, yeah, we hit Control Z. But it shows you, you know, the ability to copy and paste uh, makes life a hundred times easier, especially when you're working on houses. The houses, you might make it one way and manipulate it and copy it in several areas and then just modify them or even cut parts of houses and do the same idea. And it actually works from map to map as well, which is very nice if you've already done something that took a long time and you want to copy it and manipulate it on another map. So keep that in mind that that... Uh, rectangle tool and cutting and pacing is awesome, especially with multiple maps. Um, so with the layers, uh, I always label my first one ground one. You know, and then of course the, we all know these are ground layers, ground two, ground three. And then we have a f layer called fringe. Fringe is basically anything that you might go in front of for part of it and behind, of it, behind it uh, for the taller part of it. So for example, a tree, if you're standing in front of it, you probably want to actually stand in front of the tree. But what would be cool is when you were behind the tree, you were also behind it. So if it's more than one block or one tile high, it lets you stand behind it after that uh, amount of tiles. And I'm gonna show you right now 
what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and go and add a new tile set here. Now this is a bit different than when we were used to before. We're going to add the tree tile set here. Now um, this one is going to be a little different. It's going to be a little complex. Um, you're going to probably want to go properties. I've left these as I think 96, but uh, we're going to go to details and see, oh 128 height. Okay, my mistake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna import these, but you have to, you can't do them by 32 by 32 or they'll derp up. You have to do 128 height. They have to be 128 or it won't know uh, that you're able to walk behind them in the fringe layer anyways. Um, so here they are, we go in the fringe and the fringe layer is very powerful even. Uh, this is all one layer, don't forget, but because that you label it 128 by 128, you can do things like this, and it will not cut the textures off on the, each other. Let's just say we did this all again. Why not? We're here to learn, right? And we go in external tire, or not external tile set, but new tile set, and we go and browse the image, and we go to the tree again, and we just left it at 32. Okay, whatever. Oh, look at this. You can just drag and click. Oh, it looks fine. But if the player tried to walk behind that tree, they would they would be showing through it. That would be the first glitch. And let's just say I want to put this tree over this tree. No, sir. It will not work that way. And that's why hit Control Z and I'll remove that tile set. Remember that the Control Z and Control Y will undo even actions done to the UI basically, which is great. Uh, that's why we want to make sure that we definitely uh, label it at 128 or whatever the height of the trees are in that set and that's why the trees are actually in their own tile set because if we had the mix on other things I mean these aren't these are definitely 32 but if we label this entire thing 128 that means it would be selecting this and of course you can't draw like that and there you go so you know you put your tree here and you put one there and, you know oh yeah if they're on the same exact level they will derp up that's why you have to kind of interlace them like that but uh yeah pretty cool huh i mean if it's hidden back here you could also do that i mean no one's going to know that's on the water so remember trickery is great it works beautiful huh and uh, so that's your fringe layer now after your fringe besides that magical trickery is the above layer or anything anything really like it doesn't matter what you label it's basically going to be above anyways um the nice part about this layer is no matter what anything and everything would be above you so what is a good example of using above layer well let's just say you're walking in under a bridge then you would want to use above like the bridge would be over you you're walking under it or another good example is if you build a house so i, I mean we're not going to build a house here, but uh, let's just say, you know, pretend this was the back of the house. Oh, maybe one that we're not using. This is the back of the house, right? Houses in 2D games. Um, there you go. It's the most ugliest house. We'll pretend this part's the roof. Uh, you probably can walk back part of that, right? So you would use the above layer for at least this part of the house. The rest of it, just put on the ground layer. But, you know, the little tip there where you could probably see a player walking behind there, you know, give them that extra little 3D feel in a 2D world, uh, you would probably put that on the above layer to make that work. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, how you deal with that. Then after that, we have one really important tile set. You know, probably the most important, collision. And these have to be spelt right. I did not spell collision right. Collision. I really hope I did. If you're unsure, you can always go to Google and check it out. There you go. Collision. Uh, but anyways, um, I'm tired. I got like four hours of sleep. So <laughs> there's the collision layer. Uh, for the collision layer, there's already a tile set. And you can actually just drag these in, by the way. So let's go to Maps. And let's go up here in Tile Set. Oops, sorry. Graphics. And then go to Tiles. And then you type in Collision. And so instead of importing it like we've been doing it, you can just drag it right on here. As long as you drag it on here, if you do it here, this will layer out. Because it'll think you're trying to load a map or something. But if you drag it over here, it'll actually know you're trying to import it. So leave it by default rules, and there's your collision layer. Now this is when you got to remember which layer you're working on. Because sometimes you might do your collision layer accidentally on another layer, and oh boy, that's a mess. So your collision layer, you basically mark anything that has water, 
because we can't walk on water, right? So we just go like this. So all this red, the player can't walk, right? Makes sense. There you go. Now, remember I said, if you do a mob spawn area, then you're going to have to clear out this entire area, right? Like, you just can't have mobs spawning everywhere. So what we do is you do is the fill tool after you know there's no holes left in here. And uh, let's get out of that fill tool. And there you go. The entire map is now uh, nothing can spawn there, which is awesome. So that's what we want, right? And you can hide the collision layer so it doesn't annoy the hell out of us. Uh, the last layer that you would have is the objects layer. The objects layer is actually quite important for things like adding the spawns, objects, but honestly we probably would be working with that together anyways and once you get to that point we'd probably be working I probably won't show you much on that but I guess for the warping it's kind of important so you want an easy way of doing it? This is what I do because I don't I get tired, I forget, I don't remember things. You go to map and just open, oh let's just open uh, this one here, the cave one. Is this the cave one? Oh this is the house one, doesn't matter. And then go to the objects layer, right click this, and go to edit, and make sure it's highlighted, copy, go to this layer. You have to go to the objects layer, hit control V, and there you go. Uh, basically I have you snap to grid on, which is kind of important to make this work well. And let's just say this was, uh, you know, a house or something. Um, this whole thing, you would have, you would stretch it out to that, and then basically you go to its properties, right-click and go to object properties, and you would add three new properties. Uh, just like when we added, you remember the name property to the house, or since you're copying it, you don't have to worry. But basically, this is the destination map, so it says it's going to teleport you to zero zero one zero zero one dash one. And then it's destiny tile, uh, tile X and Y. So X is, okay, so you see near the start menu, 26 is the X, 41 is your Y value. So basically you just go to your other map and you just like, okay, I want him at, you know, 2244. And you just write 2244, and then when they walk in here, they get teleported. And that's just basically the most simple uh, way of using the teleport system. Actually, we call it waypoints, but uh, it doesn't matter. And it has also other variables. You can put like the old man's house, outside the old man's house. Uh, I didn't even put a space there, but uh, this name is actually kind of important because this label is actually used in game. They will see this label, so try to keep it relatively a little nicer. Uh, and then your type has to be warp. Visible or not, it'll be the same in game, so leave it visible. And uh, yeah, that's how you add a warping system into it. So there you go, you guys have learned the basic of installing tiled. Did we do install tiled? I thought we installed tiled. Uh, installing the assets on your desktop wherever and creating a map creating it and saving it in the assets and naming it because you have to name it for the server to make sure it runs and then uh, we started learning some of the terrain paintbrush or I kept calling it auto tiles even though that wasn't quite correct but we learned about that we learned about multiple layers how important it is to have layers how you can't do everything on one single layer even though the world would be perfect and you use multiple layers to kind of fake and cheat. We know that after the fringe layer, if it's labeled fringe and it has to be spelt right, it's above and it's over top of the character. We know the fringe layer itself is a special layer where the tree trunks themselves um, you know, are above the, or under the player, but when the player goes behind the tree itself, it's above. And that's because after the 32 pixels or one tile, then it's behind the player, or you know, above the player, sorry. Um, and one other thing we did, uh, we learned colli collision, and we completely forgot, by the way, you know, I don't know if you noticed this, but if you're on the right set, you can right click and pick those tiles. Uh, but one thing we forgot to do is set these to collision. So you can almost guess where they are, something like that. Um, and of course you don't want the player walking. So we didn't cover this. This is a complete derp on my set. We can disable um, fringe. Stay on the collision. There you go. So we can complete and see this. So you don't want them in the water, right? And of course you would just fill this up. 
There you go. And uh, there you go. So take collision off, put the fringe. There you go. Now we have a, pro a proper decent map. And uh, so there you guys go. The next uh, episode is going to be a very special episode. It's going to show you how to do a cave and generate it like that. It's magic. And it's going to be using the auto tile system, and it's godly. So you guys will enjoy that quite a bit. So that will be just starting a new map, showing that off. It will be a pretty quick one. Uh, but this will hopefully get you guys into mapping for... Um, Elmlore and uh, you know th we have tile sets if you ever want to add tile sets you can you should probably talk to me first they need to have certain copyrights and stuff like that we'll have that on the wiki as well we'll talk about that and uh, yeah if you have any questions or comments make sure you go to elmlore.com post them on the forums there's the development section feel free to use it uh, the more questions the better I, I like to talk to people so please talk to me uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and see you next episode.